Hey everybody, it's Adam again. Uh, today's lesson, we're going to do the post startup check. So we're going to take a look at different things. You already have your reducer installed. We're going to look at the noise, vibration, temperature, see where things need to be, and go over each one of those individually. All right, for today's lesson, we're going to go over the pre and post installation checklist, things you want to check once you get the reducer mounted, installed in your application. So this particular setup is a chain drive, low speed shaft out, solid shaft. Um, motor's already been mounted, where motor's already been wired, so we won't cover that, but we'll cover more so the, the mounting of the gearbox itself to the equipment and the, the chain and sprocket side of things. So the reducer's mounted, but when you want to check, when they're mounted like this, what we call flange mounted or, or solid mounted, you want to make sure they're sitting solid. You don't want to run into the situation called soft foot. So with soft foot, you can see there's a little bit of movement here. We want to avoid this at all costs. Now ideally, the, a machined base that's ready for these dimensions that's completely flat is the best uh, option to have, but it, in a pinch you could always use shims like this to shim out the, the, the missing space. So what you'll do here, you'll get these shims in, you get them in nice and good, make sure your mounting bolts are tight, and now the rocking is gone, what we see here. So now you know it's a solid base all the way across. There's no movement, so there'll be no fatigue on the reducer or anything like that. So not, a, not, the, not the best fix. It's kind of a Band-Aid fix, but it will get you through. Uh, it will work as long as you keep the mounting bolts tight. So it'll keep the reducer from moving. So that's the first thing you want to check. Uh, next, uh, we want to check the oil level. So we checked, mentioned that in a previous lesson, but make sure your oil level is accurate for the position that it's in. You'll check that on the bullseye there, and make sure your breather is installed for the application. So when you're checking the alignment, we can use a straight edge like this. There are laser aligners, things of that nature, but you just want to make sure it's square to each other, not too far off either direction, to make sure it's pulling completely straight. Breather's in, we know we're level, we know the oil level's good. Next we want to check the chain tension. So the rule of thumb for the most part is for every inch of center distance from center to center of your driven and driver, driven and driver sprockets, you want 4% of flex. So uh, that varies by chain manufacturer, but for, the, for this video we'll, we'll use that rule of thumb. So we'll take that, we'll take a straight edge, from edge to edge of the sprocket and we'll take a scale and see where we're at. So here we don't want it to go too tight so this is a little too tight. What happens if it gets too tight for, for chain tension, belt tension, whatever case may be, you're putting too much of an overhung load on the low speed shaft of the reducer and that'll cause issues with misalignment inside the reducer itself so that'll fail low speed bearings eventually could fail the gear as well. So we want to make sure this isn't too tight. So this is a little bit too tight. So we'll go back this down just a little. And there we go. That's a much better, much better chain tension. Many different ways to do that. That's the simplest. Um, obviously you'd want to make sure all the guarding goes on after you've checked that. For this video we will not have guarding on here so we'll stand back when we go ahead and start it up. But you want to make sure your guarding is on there. One other comment to make about the tension, when you're selecting the gearbox we have to consider overhung load. So when you know, especially when you know the application is going to have a chain, have a belt drive on the output shaft. So the part of that overhung load calculation is the location factor of this sprocket or belt uh, shiv, whatever the case may be. But uh, ideally you want it as close as possible, that helps prevent that overhung load, but depending on the application, there is a location factor where this, where this pull point is. So take that into account when you're calculating your overhung load. So the chain is nice and tensioned. We made sure all our mounting bolts for our equipment are tight. The, the QD bushings for our sprockets are tight as well, so we'll go through and tighten them up. They're nice and tight. The key for the driven sprocket is also installed. Set screws are tight on, the, on that sprocket as well, so they're nice and tight. So now we're ready to start it up. So we'll go ahead and back up and start it up.
So we get it, let it run for a little bit. Now the main thing here, you wanna check some things right away, anything obvious. So if it's rocking, if it's moving, if it's jumping, whatever the case may be, you wanna check that. But there are some things you wanna check after it's already been up and running for a while, the temperature is saturated, and it's, it's broken in, if you will. So there's some situations where the temperature will go shoot up very high and then it'll drop down and stay there. So don't be alarmed if it gets hot really quick. It may shoot up really fast. It's strictly because everything's kind of meshing together in the application, making sure it's just working, working together correctly. So give it some time to warm up uh, and then come back and do, do these same checks again. So things you want to check for, obviously temperature, see where it saturates at, uh, consistently check it every couple hours and then extend your interval every couple of days, every couple of weeks, depending on your, your maintenance schedule there. But you want to check that temperature and just see where it's at. These, depending on the application, anywhere from 100 degrees Fahrenheit to 130 degrees Fahrenheit is somewhat normal. Um, that, that can vary greatly. So the, the AGMA rule is 100 degrees Fahrenheit over ambient is okay. So if you're anywhere around that number, you're running fine. But anything over 200 degrees Fahrenheit for an extended period of time is a little, was worrisome because that's when the lubrication starts breaking down. So just keep an eye on temperatures in general. <clears throat> Another one to listen for is vibration. Uh, I, I mentioned before the obvious noises, the rocking, the banging, anything obvious like that. Anything in the chain and sprocket area. Uh, make sure the chain's not loose, hitting anything, flexing too much and hitting things. But vibration in the sense of internal vibration that the human ear can't hear. You take your vibration meter uh, and you, you put your meter on there, see what the normal is and take that as your baseline. So you're taking a baseline of all these readings, vibration, temperature, etc. Uh, you're also listening for any noises, so any clunking inside the gearbox. For, for internal noises, you can use any longer, longer tool, obviously do this safely uh, with not getting in the way of any moving equipment, but say this is an open end wrench, but you can use a screwdriver as well. If you hold the piece of the tool on the piece of equipment and listen through the tool, you can hear any clunking a little bit finer than you would just standing here. So move this along, make sure you don't hear anything abnormal uh, from the high speed end all the way to the low speed end. So, Things like that are things you want to check, and you want to check them consistently. Um, depending on your maintenance schedule, as things wear in over time, years down the line, you'll have to continuously check these sort of things. So you always want to look for the soft foot, because these bolts could loosen up uh, just from vib the vibration of the application. You always want to keep checking that. So uh, there's some quick things to check. Um, just be safe when you're doing it is the big one. So make sure you're wearing your proper PPE, and safety equipment for your facility, but for the most part, your piece of equipment is up and running and you're ready to go. Okay, that'll be it for today's lesson. Uh, if you have any questions in the meantime before the next lesson, uh, go to sumitomodrive.com and or contact your local Sumitomo rep.